Alexandra from Creating Spain and today I wanted to show you a little trick that is really quite fun and it's a use for a tool that we normally think of uh, something for lettering but in this particular case that's not what I'm going to use it for. Okay so I've done a little bit of prep work beforehand and I've drawn a rectangle and then what I did was I made an offset and then after that I extracted one from the other and I got a frame. So that's as far as I've got. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to add some very thin rectangles and I want them to line up in there. So the easiest way of doing this is to go to object and duplicate. And uh, I'm going to put my horizontal spacing down to, actually no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to alter my vertical spacing down to naught, and I'm going to have my horizontal at just over half a centimetre. Actually, I want that a bit more spaced out, so there we go, that'll do nicely. And I'm just going to keep going until I've filled up my area, which I have there. And then I am going to weld all that together. There we go. And then I am actually going to do something a little different with it. And what I'm going to do is go to the effects and I'm going to go to the wrapper. And in this particular case, I want the top diameter, which bear in mind, is um, not the same as circumference, is the diameter to be 5.71 but I want the bottom diameter to be much smaller and I want the slant height to be about 4-ish, something like that. Okay that's near enough. Now when I make the bottom diameter smaller this all draws in and there we have a relatively small hole in there and I don't particularly want to have the template so click OK and what do I end up with? I end up with something that looks remarkably like a wagon wheel but this would be quite handy if you wanted to do something which was conical. Let me show you again in a different way. I'm going to take a rectangle and I'm going to duplicate that underneath. There we go. This one I'm going to keep as is. This one I am going to do the effect of the shadow layer again, but I'm going to do it inside this time. Oops, inside and make it a bit bigger, that's okay. And I'm going to delete one from the other basically, which gives me my frame. And I am still going to do my little line here and I'm still going to duplicate that so you're thinking huh, nothing's changed yet it will do have patience it will and I need to oops that was as it should be no not I want that a bit more now that was a bit too much maybe okay all right so room for one more there and I'm going to go to path and I'm going to make that a union as it was done previously. But then things are going to get very slightly different. This one here I am going to copy and paste. Okay, now this one, oops, this one here, which has now got a bit too big, so I better put that back down to size, there we go, that's around about it, this one here. I'm going to go to the lattice 
and I'm going to put a lattice in here and I'm not going to faff around with it I'm just going to put the standard one in for the time being to give the idea and that will become my lattice and I'm going to move it back over here and in fact I'm going to center it up because I don't want any little bits sticking out where they shouldn't do so click on that one click on that one okay and path union again so there we go now this one I am going to do something entirely different and whoops didn't want a square sorry and do I wanted a circle roughly circle I'm not being fussy about this I would if I was actually designing something particular but since I'm playing not really go to the effects and go to object on path auto preview which is a good idea and I'm just going to use the count and I'm going to go for an interior crop as well which means it takes the inside out of this and I'm just going to fill the line here that will do nicely weld them together and remove the original object yeah fine okay there we go and this one is going to get put on here. Now I'm going to make it so that it's central and then I'm going to go to path and union and there we go I have a little scallop. Now when I go to the FX and I go to the wrapper I can choose my diameters again and my height and so on. Take the height down a little. There we go. Whoops. Around about four ish. And I'm going to curve this in to make the shape that I require. And that is very nice. Thank you very much. I will keep that. And there we are. Now, this would be really quite pretty and quite useful. If you wanted to do something like a lampshade for tea light or anything that requires a conical shape that is actually held together by its pattern and it's a really easy way of doing that kind of shape without doing too much of the mathematics involved in making one. Now obviously you can make this as fancy or as plain as you like. You could make the shape very plain, then you could overlay it with a pattern and you could weld it, you can do what you like. But that is just a fun thing to do with that particular tool and that is under the effects and it is the wrapper. It's the one that we normally use when we want to put text on mugs and glasses and that sort of thing. Okay, hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.